things could be good for a few weeks, a few months, then all of a sudden out of nowhere, they run out of willpower and something happens and the same pattern then repeats. If I want to get the weeds out, I have to go to the root of them, pull them out by the root fully and completely, and then, and only then, will they not come back. So you're aware of a pattern, you're aware that it doesn't serve you, you've been able to get to the root of it, and you've been able to release it, you then become in a position where you're able to then begin regulating your emotions on a much more regular basis. Gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the TPM Show. Have you ever been wondering why you repeat the same patterns over and over again, even though you may not want to, either in business, your personal life, relationships, etc.? Well, today, Tim and I are going to go over the reasons why we continue to repeat these same patterns and ways to get out of those loops so you can actually break through that cycle and actually get what you want. Tim, thanks for being here, brother. Mm, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Yes, it is. Uh, absolutely love having you on the show and back in the saddle. And this topic in particular is one that I'm very passionate about, as you know. Mm -hmm. I call it unconscious commitments. But why is it that men or we as individuals repeat the same patterns over and over again, even if we know they're wrong? Yeah, <clears throat> I think there's two main things that stand out to me. I know we'll dive into more as we go through here, but... Um two things one is the idea of trauma i think there's such a stigma around that word and so it's so loaded as well yeah right? i think it gets misused quite a bit 100 percent. and the men we work with don't resonate with that idea the I things don't. they've been through in their life so i think that keeps them distanced and keeps a lot of people distanced from certain things they could do in order to get to the root cause of why a pattern is occurring and as a result oftentimes uh, the men we work with then don't ever get to the root cause and just deal with the symptom. And the symptom just keeps on repeating and repeating and things could be good for a few weeks, a few months, and all of a sudden out of nowhere, they run out of willpower and something happens and the same pattern then repeats. And it usually then causes harm to them, to the people they love, be it at work, be it at home. And it's, it's discouraging and deflating because they've just used so much effort and energy to try and change this time and how this time was going to be the time and they can just run out of hope over time as well um but this is why we designed the alpha reset all right it's been designed to get to the root cause of things for men so that they can actually um deal with the root instead of the symptom and make a lasting change yeah, for those guys that aren't aware, the Alpha Resets one of our is our flagship transformational experience that happens mm -hmm. over four days. Um, it's really an amazing experience that allows men to get to the root cause of a lot of issues. Um, not only get to the root cause, but dig it out should mm -hmm. they want to and, and get rid of it so they can move on. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> and I think I know because we designed it. A big piece of the, why it works and the way it does is because. It's not theory, mm -hmm. right? So many people, so many men that we work with have tried to solve an emotional problem using logic, Yeah, right? And it, it can help to a degree, but there becomes a point where the only way through is through, where, you know, at the end of the day, the body keeps a scar. You now we, we go through things in our lives. We have things that happen, we all do. And as kids, even as teenagers and adults, and... Oftentimes, we don't know how to deal with those. We don't know how to interpret them, especially as kids when we're young. We, we don't know what they mean. You know, We're looking at the world through a lens of what do I need to do to stay safe, loved, and protected, right? So for me, for example, the environment I was in was a very intimidating one. Now, my father was very uh, scary for me to be around. I never knew which version of him I was going to get. Um, it was very unpredictable. It could be very aggressive to me, to my mum. Um, you know, so much so my sister moved out when she was 14, I think. Um, so for me, what I then learned to do in order to stay safe, loved and protected was to be quiet, to uh, kind of fly under the radar, to go in my room, you know, all these different things. And um, one of the things I used to do, you'll, you'll either know this and or you'll love it, 
um, in order to feel in control, I would go into my bedroom and I would organize it. And I'd just sit in it. Um, Because I I then felt safe in that environment and that environment was then in my control. Mm -hmm. But the point is, for a long time, I didn't know that that was even affecting me until, you know, mid-20s. Mid, yeah, about mid twenties, mid to late twenties, and I realized although things were good on the outside, <clears throat> life was good. Um, I was doing well. It, it, it didn't feel that way, mm-hmm. um, and I was repeating patterns. But I was doing all the things that I thought I should do. Um, you know, driving from meeting to meeting, just listening to uh, was an audio CD back in those days. Mm. Uh, Tony Robbins and all the others kind of turning my car into those mobile universities, right? And um, trying harder, working harder, doing more hours, you know, just trying to do more motivation, really. But I didn't need more motivation. I didn't need more persistence. That was going to get me more of what I got, which was repeating patterns. I need a better insight. Um, why are you smirking? <laughs> <laughs> That's a couple things. <laughs> Because we're such good friends. <laughs> I'm happy to share with you, but. Yeah, go for it. I was just, th- I was laughing because I've gotten to know you so well, um, really well. You were talking about how as a kid, in order to feel safe, you become quiet and under the radar, which is the opposite of how you are yeah. now, right? I was also laughing because some of the men were talking about how meeting me in person, I sound so slow because they listen to this show at <laughs> 2X. I was just thinking they can't do that now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, but yeah, what, what about you? Repeating patterns. like Yeah, the way I look at this um, and the way I coach it, but the way I look at it in my own life is if there's something that's not working well in my life or working as well as I'd like it to, um, I say, hey, is this a pattern? You know, mm-hmm. It's happened more than twice, right? Is it a pattern? Yes or no? If the answer is yes. Then I go into the second question. Does it serve me to my highest level? If the answer is no, then I move on to the next. If it's yes, then I go, we'll keep doing that pattern. Mm -hmm. If it's no, then I go to the next question, okay? Like, you know, if it doesn't serve me to my highest level and it's a pattern, then I go into a whole program that I call unconscious commitments, breaking Mm -hmm. through those and figure it out. The first thing to know is recognize it. Is it a pattern and does it serve you to your highest level or not? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then you got to go down and pull out the weeds because my philosophy is, then you're committing to this consciously or unconsciously. And I know a lot of guys are go, what? I don't, I don't commit to this. If whatever it is they're doing, if they're overeating or if their wife is consistently belittling them or whatever it may be, uh, if they're broke, you are committed to being broke. You are committed to being Mm -hmm. overweight. You're committed to drinking too much. You're committed to working too much consciously or unconsciously. Mm -hmm. And if you're not consciously committed to it, then you've got a program running within your psyche, right? That is telling you to do this, to keep you safe um, because you you haven't filled your cup, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. it is occurring for that reason. And unless you get to the root cause, it's just like weeding a garden, Mm -hmm. right? So if I go out to, we're on a 106 acre property right now, and there's a lot of weeds, so to speak. Now I can go mow over them or I could even you know, just trim the top of them and it's gonna look fine. People aren't gonna really notice the weeds, but they're gonna grow back. Mm-hmm. The pattern is going to continue. 100%. If I wanna get the weeds out, I have to go to the root of them, pull them out by the root fully and completely. And then, and only then, will they not come back. Mm-hmm. And it takes more work. It's a lot harder to dig up those roots. And it's the same thing with these patterns. It's harder to get to the root of it and I don't think you can get to the root of it purely through theory, to your point earlier. Mm-hmm. You said logic, but to me it's theory. It needs to be somewhat experiential. 100%. Even talking therapies. Now, talking therapies are not going to really get to the root. They can help in alleviating some of the symptoms, and you can feel better, and you can understand yourself better and get better perspective. But there's a lot of science now as well, really backing up the idea that what you think in your mind, you feel in the body. Yeah. And how the body keeps the scar. I believe it. And yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, let's say as a kid, um, so I I went through an experience a few years ago. I've told you about this. It was in, when I was living in uh, Florence, mm-hmm. in Italy. And I first started to get into bioenergetics. 
and I went to do a session with um, the the guy I was working with, and it was essentially a session where um, he was going to get me to access a lot of anger, and I knelt down in front of this uh, big kind of sponge um, box, if you will. And he took me through this process and I went crazy. But the memory that came up, I had never, had not thought about it my entire life. And basically it was a memory of me as a child, seven years old-ish, in bed, Bedroom door closed. I could hear across across the hallway something happening in my mum and dad's bedroom. Um, my mum was crying. She was saying certain things. There was noises from my dad. And in this session, I lived out that experience. And I was just screaming, shouting, calling my dad all sorts of names, not, not very good ones or very nice ones. And just imagining walking across that hallway, opening the door and ragging him off her and just beating the shit out of him, quite honestly. Um, now as a kid, obviously that, that never happened. As a kid, I stayed in the bed and I felt very helpless and I felt frozen. And I, I can remember just laying in that bed, really um, wanting to do something, but just, not mm -hmm. and again like i said i'm not that memory hadn't crossed my mind at all what not even once point is i'd stayed trapped in my body that feeling of freeze right fight flight or freeze that feeling of anger that feeling of frustration and when i gave it an outlet i got to the root of some of the stuff for me and i felt night and day difference um, I couldn't speak for about two days um, because I just my voice and the levels with which I shouted and it was insane. Um, but it was incredibly cathartic. Now I'd been aware of certain um, belief systems I'd formed as a child because of the environment I was in and how I looked at that environment. So I'd become aware of how I had then started to have feelings of inadequacy and not being enough and, and not being good enough. And that's what was coming up in my mid to late 20s and causing these repeating patterns. But even despite understanding that becoming aware of them theoretically, it wasn't until I combined that with really giving them the physical piece and outlet for the emotion to actually be expressed. Because as a kid, I felt anger, but the anger was never expressed. I think as men, we feel a lot of emotions, right? And we don't ever get a chance to express them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you cry, oh, what's wrong? Don't cry. If you're angry, don't be intimidating. If you, you're happy, oh, don't don't be arrogant. You know, so it's, it's like, so what? who am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to be? So yeah, there's a lot of science emerging about the role of what you think in your mind, you feel in the body, and you're going to keep repeating patterns until you give yourself the opportunity to get to the root of it and give that emotion and outlet to be expressed in the form that it ought to be expressed and wants to be expressed. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you 100%. I've seen this a thousand times, you know? And even before when I was in the fitness industry, um, I would see people release trauma or distress or whatever you want to call it through different exercises. I remember a woman that worked for me. Um, she was also getting a, her next level yoga uh you know, basically certification, if you will. Young girl, probably 21 or so. And she came into my studio uh, with just tears in her eyes. And I was just like, hey, what happened? And she was doing a back bend in yoga, which apparently happens a lot for that particular posture. And when she did the back bend, she kind of felt something snap, if you will, and then just released a ton of emotion for her. Wow. Just sobbing. She said she was sobbing uncontrollably for hours. Um, now she wasn't hurt, she wasn't in pain. Mm -hmm. So that whatever snap or what have you is kind of like that twitch, but it was whatever it was releasing inside of her. And you and I have seen countless men, thousands go through some of the exercises that we do with men on the experiential side of it, that where we see these guys come up with it and happened this last week, say, I haven't thought about that 
you know, since I was a kid or I haven't thought about that in 10 years. Cause it's not just childhood stuff. It's stuff that no. we just stuffed down over time and they haven't thought of it. They didn't know it was bothering them, but it bubbled to the surface, which tells us we use that term bubble up to the surface to denote something that's stuffed down, right? People mm -hmm. don't think about that conversation, why we use that vernacular. But it bubbled up to the surface for them, and all of a sudden they're like, wow, I haven't thought about that thing that happened when I was 10 or 13 or whatever it is mm -hmm. in 30 years. And then they start connecting the dots. Ah, and when that happened, this happened, I did that, and then, oh, this is why I do it now. Oh, mm -hmm. and all of these things start connecting. Mm -hmm. And one thing I do, I do think you can get to the root of things through talk therapy. I think that's possible. That wouldn't work for me probably, but I don't think you can relieve the root or at least yeah. I don't see it. You can't happen. pull it up. Yeah. Right? You can become aware of it, but. I haven't seen it happen. So I'm, I'm, mm. I don't want to throw the baby out the bathwater, so to speak, because I'm sure it's helped a lot of people, mm -hmm. but, but I just, I don't know anybody that it's helped to that level. I think it helps people like, okay, now I know what it is and they can talk about it, mm -hmm. but you really need to get to the core of the, of the problem. Yeah. And I think kind of changing tact a little bit for every guy wants to be grounded. Yeah. All right. And a big piece of being able to experience grounded masculinity, as we call it, is the ability for a man to be able to regulate his emotions. Mm -hmm. Right. And regulating your emotions doesn't come from just, keep stuffing them down. Doesn't come from just theorizing them. Hey guys, I wanted to interrupt this episode because it's dawned on me that many of you guys aren't aware that we actually have a book on how to save your marriage without talking about it. Now, thousands of men have read it, they've reviewed it, and I wanna give you the opportunity to do the same. If you're interested in grabbing it, it's a short read, but it's helped a lot of men just like you. And maybe you're not interested in the activation method yet, but this is a small entry point that can really turn things around for you. Go over on Amazon. We have it priced as cheap as Amazon will let us. And that way you have a resource that you can use right now to start getting some results in your marriage. Now let's get back to the episode. And the key is once you're able to regulate them, so let's say you've got to the root, so you're aware of a pattern, you're aware that it doesn't serve you, you've been able to get to the root of it and you've been able to release it, you then become in a position where you're able to then begin regulating your emotions on a much more regular basis. And in order for you to provide true presence to the people in your life, be it your wife, your kids, your staff, whoever, they're all going to feel you and that's going to be working for you or against you. Well, so let's say you haven't got to the root and you've stuffing these things down, they're going to feel that from you. They're going to feel the, the distance they will feel from you is the distance that exists within you. And the anger they're going to feel from you is the anger that exists within you. Equally, when you get to that root and you're able to release it, different emotions then begin to be experienced. Oftentimes, the guys talk to us about feeling incredibly peaceful, loving, happy, at ease, and then all of a sudden they walk into a room and everyone else is different. Uh, well, it's because you're different. They're responding to your energy and your wife or even your kids. This can have a huge impact, massive impact. But you've got to recognize the pattern and you've got to get to the root in order to actually get to the side. That's absolutely true. So if a guy's listening to this, Tim, and he's going, okay, I could see a pattern or two in my life and all of us have them, right? And he goes through that whole idea. Okay, there's a pattern. Is it serving me to my highest level? No. Okay. Now, maybe I buy into Doug's theory that I'm, I'm committed to it. Because that's a hard pill to swallow. Because right? if yeah. something's not going well, it's natural for people to play the victim card and blame mm -hmm. outside circumstances. Well, it's not my fault my wife keeps cheating on me. It's not my fault that they keep lying to me. It's not my fault I don't make enough money. It's not my fault. But the reality is if it's a pattern, mm -hmm you have to play a responsibility. And if it's not serving to your highest level, how and why are you committed to it? Now, if they identify this, what, what do you want them to do? I want you to consider that if you keep on doing what you're doing, you keep, you're going to keep on getting what you've got. Yep. Right? Because I think that's so easy to overlook. And therefore, guys can then rely on more motivation. Motivation isn't going to be the thing that's going to get them through this. Mm -hmm. That's oftentimes the thing that's got them into this position that require more motivation or more persistence require better insight. So therefore 
seek some kind of professional help. It doesn't have to be with us. It doesn't have to be the alpha reset, but do something that's going to put you in a position where you are able to not only just talk about it, but release it, right? There's lots of different ways to do it. Uh, obviously, we know we believe in the alpha reset. Um, thousands of guys have gone through it by this point. They're huge advocates of it. We've never marketed it. It's always the guys that um, encourage other guys to go through it, right? So that's the first thing for sure I recommend them doing. Seek professional support. Yeah, and I think it's interesting for guys because a lot of men don't know the origin story of, you know, TPM and where we started. Um, you know, in 2020, we really focused on, you know, changing things and making sure because we saw the biggest pain point guys are going through was in their marriage, the businessmen we were yeah, with. during COVID. Yeah. We also have had for the past eight years a, a version of the activation method, which is for self, which covers this. So it is a whole systematized methodology that helps men who are stuck, not sure what to do, maybe lost their passion or their mojo, mm -hmm. go through a, pro, a, a series of processes that ends in the apex of an alpha reset as well coming through there. And guys, if you're interested in that, we don't actually market that as well. Not because it's not good, not because we don't want men in it. It's just we have so many guys coming through right now. But if you are interested, there will be a link in the description. Just check that out um, in the show notes, so to speak, and you can get that. But focusing on that part of self, right, the five territories, self, health, mm -hmm. wealth, relationships, and business, right? The self and relationships are the two one men struggle with the most, and that's why that's we have you know methodologies that are proven to help men through usher through those. And once those two start working right, the other ones seem to fall in order pretty quickly. Oh, easily, easily. They're the biggest pain points for the guys because, you know, got to the self piece, you've got these guys oftentimes that have everything that they wanted monetarily, uh, materialistically. They've, they've got everything. Yeah. They've got all these hallmarks of success, yet they are unhappy. They are waiting for the rug to be pulled from beneath them. They feel like a fraud. Um, and no matter what they achieve, they don't feel happy. They often feel worse. More success brings more unhappiness. Um, and they can't outwork this problem. <laughs> they can't out, out hustle it. So at the same time, when they choose to address it and get to the root cause and stop the repeating patterns, um, it's the, one of those big dominoes that once you knock it over, a lot of the other dominoes fall. Yeah, and I was just thinking, Tim, I know you're doing a webinar on this. I'm not sure when this episode's going to come out, um, but you're going to be doing a webinar on this. If guys can't hit the webinar or they want to find out info on how they can get to the webinar when you're doing a deeper dive on this, mm -hmm. I know originally this was for a special section of our community. I love, if you're okay with it, to open up to the listeners uh, of this. Would that yeah. work? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, so uh, how would how would men find out more information about the, with the webinar? Um, just email into VIP and the powerful man .com and just put in the subject heading uh, webinar and just put in the body webinar and we'll just get back to you and uh, give you the details and even the, the recording if you can attend. Cool. So that's VIP at the powerful man .com. Very important person at the powerful man .com. Yeah. And guys, if you just, if you shoot an email there, um, the way that they'll get back to you is via email. If you leave your number, Someone mm -hmm. will call you and get you those details as well. Um, cool. Thanks for opening up that to this audience. Because mm. uh, I think that's going to be very powerful. I know you've been working on that quite a bit to help these men get through. Um, and this is a big thing, guys. Like when you are able to find these patterns and other things that are going on with self and actually start eliminating these, you become a better man, a freer man. Mm. And we call it a grounded man, a grounded mm. masculine man. Um, that allows you to be a better father to your children, a role model to your children better businessman, a better leader, and a better husband and a better lover at the end of the day. Big time. Yeah, you just, everything you do comes from a totally different place. 100%, you know? man. You know, we often speak to these guys with they're running, running nine-figure companies, whether they've sold multiple companies, whether, regardless, they have huge accolades and hallmarks of success. And when we say to them, and you know, would you be open to the possibility that you're only playing at 50% right now? It kind of blows a, blows a mind, right? What do you mean 50%? I don't see how that's possible. 
And we'll, when we list off all the reasons of why that could be happening because of these repeating patterns and they see it, oh, I see. And then they go through the process. At that point, I get it. You're right. I was playing at 50%. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I have a guy that I work with one on one, Tim, that you know, and he is crushing it in business. Everything from the outside looks amazing. And I had the same conversation with him. Now I worked with him for a year and I said, okay, what percent do you think you're playing at? He said, hold on, hold on. I remember when you first asked me that question, Doug, and I challenged you and I was wrong. I was like, okay, so you do think you're playing at 50%? He's like, no, you were wrong too. I was playing at 30% at best. Now that yep. I can see, I'm still not at 100%, but holy cow, you know, it looked like crushing family, crushing his marriage was having some problems. Then all of a sudden he realized, wait, when I start working on these other aspects, mm -hmm. finding these hidden patterns, eliminating them one by one, just picking off like a sniper and getting back to it, getting into his grounded masculinity practices like you're talking about, then he was able to rise up. And then through that retrospective lens, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, oh, wow, there's so much more potential here. And just because you're beating the other men that out there in the world that you, at least you're seemingly are, doesn't mean that's your potential, that's your maximum. So guys, if you feel like, you know what, I'm just meant for something more. I feel like there's more in the tank. I'm just not how to get it. Make sure you get on Tim's webinar because that's exactly what he's gonna be talking about. Yeah, it's like <clears throat> when you've got these repeating patterns in your life, it's like you're walking around carrying a, a heavy backpack. And you don't even realize it. Yep. And then when you take it off, you realize, holy shit. You don't realize how heavy something is till you put it down. Yes. And then you're trying to, instead of walking around with 30 pounds on your back, 40 pounds on your back, you've got nothing on your back. You can just move easier. You move faster. Things are just easier. And it you just level up. That's true. That's absolutely true. What do you want to leave these guys with, Tim? Don't think you can outwork this because if this resonates and you have repeating patterns, don't just skip to next podcast. More motivation is not going to work. More persistence is not going to work. Wherever you go, you're going to take yourself with you. You cannot outwork this. Seek the professional support, like we've said, whether it's through us or whoever, you know, um, obviously you know, we believe what we do, what we know, what we do works because we've got the, the results of thousands of men. But either way, if this resonates and you really want to live up to your potential, then you've, you've got to do something about it. You just have to try something new. Otherwise, you're going to, definition of hell, dying, meeting the man that you could have been. Nobody wants to be in that position. No way, man. No, no way. way. I love it. I love it. Thanks for being here, buddy. Gentlemen, uh, you got one shot at this game we call life. Maybe you got more, I don't know. But we know you have at least one shot at the game we call life. If you're operating below 80% of what you believe your potential is and you don't know, have a plan on how to close that gap, well, take action now. Take action now to get the first steps. Start identifying those patterns. Know if they're serving you to your highest level or not. And the hint, most of them aren't. And then you got to take action and admit to yourself that you are consciously committed to these patterns or unconsciously committed to the patterns. One of the two. It's just that simple. From that space, you can take action. You can do the steps that Tim is talking about here. But the key is taking that action and get on there. Get on the webinar. At least get on the webinar. It's a free webinar that you can actually learn some more information. Or if you're a man of action like myself, look at the description below. There should be a link. Get on a call with one of our advisors and see if you can be one of the lucky men to actually get to an alpha reset to have that experience. Gentlemen, as I always say, in the moment of insight, take massive action. And this is me calling you out to take action. So let's bust through those patterns and live that life you were designed to live. <laughs>